just as we are inspired by the people, the not-for-profits, the startups, the educators, the healthcare providers, and the government agencies we work with. By bringing them closer to the people they serve, by helping them collaborate and innovate, by fueling their mission to make life better for millions of Indians. We're building the answers to the world's truly big questions. We're AWS Public Sector. Money Control presents Transforming a Billion Lives presented by AWS Intel. Hello and a very warm welcome to Money Control, Transforming a Billion Lives presented by AWS and Intel. Well, three years on since the pandemic, there's a lot of lessons that India as a country and the world has learned. If there's one thing that's emerged very clearly, it is the role of technology in making healthcare more affordable and more accessible. How we need to do a lot more in integrating innovation in the way we deliver healthcare to ensure that people are able to access healthcare at affordable prices, regardless of their geography. Through a series of conversations today, we hope to look into some of the innovations that have disrupted the healthcare space since the pandemic. What more do we need to do to ensure that technology is greatly integrated into making healthcare more accessible and affordable? Money Control presents Transforming a Billion Lives, presented by AWS Intel. Welcome back. Our next discussion is on making healthcare accessible for all, because that is really the only goal. We have with us for this, uh, Mr. Sunil PP, South Asia Lead, Education Space NPO and Channel at AWS. We have uh, Mr. Mudit Danwade, CEO and co-founder of Dozi. Uh, Mr. Nrip Nehlani, Director, Product Management and International Marketing of Plus 91 Technologies Private Limited. Thank you very much uh, for joining us and taking up the time. Let me begin with you, uh, Sunil, first. Uh, you know, the healthcare system is changing worldwide and dramatically. The landscape has changed dramatically over the past few years, primarily due to the pandemic and partly because of introduction of new technologies. In some way, the pandemic also hastened the adoption of new technologies. From a technology uh, provider's perspective, can you tell us about some of the opportunities and challenges in this? I think, we, I think we're seeing that change across industries, healthcare being one of them for sure. Uh, what, what we're seeing is a rapid adoption of new technologies, rapid adoption of the cloud that's happening across most of the industries currently globally. I think healthcare is one of those segments that has seen a transformation of sorts because it played a, a unique part over the last couple of years to try and support addressing the challenge that we face with the pandemic. So I think what, what we're seeing really is that uh, while we've had a phenomenal play with a lot of large healthcare providers leveraging AWS, I think one of the things that we've really uh, secured ourselves is around being having the highest reliability around the services we offer, whether it's high security, whether it's compliance, whether it's scalability or functionality, we've, we've proven that in the market to a large extent. And customers like Change Healthcare, Cerna, G Healthcare, Philips Healthcare, et cetera, have been leveraging this over the years and saw us actually change our direction over the last couple of years when the requirement was so high. And, and in India, if, if you must have heard about the COVID, COVID solution that is there, which primarily was the vaccination platform, right? That was built on AWS. That was one of the, one, one of the success stories that demonstrated all the elements of it, whether it's reliability, scalability, security, everything was proven in that, in, in that platform. And I think our partners, uh, healthcare partners, have a huge benefit to partner with AWS because around how quickly we're able to provide for the highest quality of services required as a cloud provider. Wonderful, yeah. The Coven platform, the way it came up, the way the you know just the way it was rolled out, the speed at which it was rolled out was just completely mind-boggling. Uh, let me move on to Mudit. Uh, Mudit. How can you make uh, healthcare facilities and care delivery more inclusive and accessible, especially in tier two, tier three cities and villages where there's still uh, shortages of uh, medical professionals? So I think you touched a very important subject over there, right? I think uh, not just in tier two or tier three, in fact, even tier one as well, 
right? The shortage of nursing and important infrastructure is something which is very prevalent, but even more so in tier two and tier three, as you were saying. I think the one of the ways in which we are addressing, there are lots of gaps which are there, but I'll talk about, you know, what we are doing to address that. We have picked up one very uh, important segment in this, which is addressing the shortage of nursing, right? Which has a direct impact on uh, even the patient safety as well, right? If the nursing staff is stretched, uh, they are unable uh, to cater to uh, that nurse to patient ratio is kind of flawed. Then, you know, it, it, the, the, the effect uh, drifts down even the cracks and, you know, even the patient safety is compromised. So the one of the ways in which we are solving that is by automating a good chunk of time that nurses spent on taking vitals of the patient. Nearly about 25% of their time is spent on that. Dozy, uh, you know, completely automates that and thereby, you know, saves nurses and uh, uh, that important time for giving better care. Right? So that is one of the ways in which we are addressing that. Now, this is a direct implication even on tier two and tier three as well. Uh, because the technology, uh, even right now as well, right, we have implemented it across India now in close to about 60 districts across India. And that is something which is, you know, very replicable model. And, uh, uh, you know, the effect is directly, you know, going to tier one, tier two, and even tier three uh, towns as well. Well, let me bring in uh, Nirip here. Uh, Nirip Plus 91 offers a range of uh, digital healthcare services and solutions. So what does it really take to build a healthcare-based enterprise in the Indian market? And how does it improve accessibility? So um, in a nutshell, you need a lot of multifaceted know-how and expertise. And uh, you see, modern healthcare is a very... Uh, you know, fast evolving field before a pandemic, as you said, and, uh, you know, Sunil talk about, talked about COVID. The thing is that in India, uh, what is happening is that we are leapfrogging in, in, in the way we are actually approaching healthcare right now. We are trying to build a future ready healthcare system in the country. So to actually be a healthcare enterprise in India right now, uh, you need to be very, very, uh, what I would say, multi-dynamic. You need to have... Uh, you know, operational knowledge, which is absolutely top class and requires to be, you know, on the ground. You need to have uh, local knowledge of various, uh, you know, uh, strata of society at different parts of the country. So, you know, how Mudit spoke about the fact that uh, there is, uh, you know, about tier two, tier, tier three cities and tier one cities, they're all different. And inside tier one cities two or tier two cities, they're all very different from each other. So to build a really good enterprise in India, you need to have very good no local knowledge you need to have a very high degree of operational intelligence. You need to basically be very transformational in nature. You need to be uh, looking into, you know, the ideas of clinical data from the past, present and the future. And uh, you need to have a lot of rationality, empathy and a hell of a lot of patience inside this whole process. Because uh, the amount of time it takes in healthcare to actually bring about change, to create the effect is long. So uh, when you are able to see the impact, that's when the real scaling or the enterprise effect starts coming into the picture. So you need to have a multifaceted approach. Uh, thankfully, at Plus91, we've worked uh, across the world. We work in 26 different nations. So we have learned a lot in the last 16 years from you know the whole globe where we have worked. We worked in uh, resource-constrained uh, countries you know, uh, in, in West Africa, which help us in adapting our operational knowledge into, you know, the resource constrained parts of India. And we've worked in, you know, uh, highly developed nations like the US and, and Europe. And we are able to use that intelligence inside, you know, cities like Bombay and Delhi. So, uh, you know, the multifaceted approach is very, very important. Uh, having a very strong idea of technology, having a very strong idea of how transformation will bring change on the ground. Uh, is very important. And most important besides all this is be very rational, be very patient. Okay, uh, thanks for that. Uh, let me uh, move on to Sunil. Sunil, speaking from a cloud perspective, how can uh, cloud-driven healthcare solutions provide actionable insights to accelerate time-to-time -time impact for patients? And what are the some of the areas that uh, uh, you know uh, AWS partner solutions in this area? Yeah, so to take off from when left off, I think I think one of the areas we saw a significant change is that we've been working with the healthcare IT ecosystem, healthcare ISVs for a very long time, right? And, and we've seen them leverage AWS primarily because we've proven to be the most reliable provider in the market right now. And we've had a fewest number of downtimes ever is primarily where we are. 
So one of the areas that we're seeing uh, many of the ISPs and solution providers adapt is primarily around machine learning, right? Machine learning and analytics is something that we're seeing a lot of work happening there. Uh, there are a lot of providers that are leveraging Amazon SageMaker, for example, for ML modeling. And we're seeing that, that, that consumption moving up in a big way in the area of healthcare. The Comprehend Medical solution that is there that primarily allows for database management is something that we can look at uh, a large portion of, of customers and partners leveraging that as they scale. So one of the areas that in India that we are seeing is around local language learning, right? Local language access. And we're seeing a whole bunch of work happening around transcribe, whether it's healthcare, whether it's education. We're seeing a lot of uh, transcribe work happening. So it, uh, Amazon Transcribe Medical, which is a service built for the medical fraternity, is something we can look at around speech or text capabilities and looking at scaling there. So we're seeing a lot of these little interesting changes happening in the provider system, uh, which is leveraging the vast array of services that AWS has globally. And actually, I'm looking at the referenceability that we have right now, whether across healthcare globally or locally, which is kind of being, becoming a, a reference point for most customers and partners to look at. So partners are seeing and using a, a variety of new services that we've launched over the years to try and make their applications even more powerful and to address the last mile patient requirements in a much faster manner. Interesting. Um, with it, uh, uh, going across to you, Doozy is a partner in uh, remote patient uh, monitoring with an emphasis on continuous and uh, contactless uh, vitals monitoring. Take us through, you know, take us through the solution and uh, and how it's enabling efficiency and accessibility in the healthcare space. Thanks a lot, uh, Ashwada, for that. So I think there are three very important components to it. Number one is sensing, the contactless sensing part of it. That's where we use ballistocardiography uh, sensors, right, which we have uh, indigenously developed. These convert raw vibration data coming out of your every heartbeat, respiration cycles, body movements into, uh, you know, digital signals. And then using AI machine learning, we convert this into different biomarkers like heart rate, respiration, and in fact, even world's first contactless blood pressure, apnea, and many other biomarkers as well, right? So that is the second part of it which is conversion of the signals into uh, meaningful biomarkers. And the third very important part where cloud also plays a very important role is into providing all of this information in a consumable way remotely, right? For the clinicians and for the nursing staff who might not be present next to the bedside, but if the patient is undergoing an, an abnormal vital, it generates a alert and thereby, you know, facilitates early intervention and uh, you know, like uh, early intervention over there, right? Thereby saving lives. In fact, using this alone, right? And last one year itself, we have saved close to about 8,000 lives by giving these uh, AI based alerts. Uh, these have been documented as well. And because this also automates the entire nursing workflow, because all of this was otherwise done by manually, uh, it was manually done by nurses going near the patient, noting down the vitals, noting it down on a piece of paper, and so on. We have saved close to about two and a half million nursing hours as well in just last one year alone, right? So that is the amount of impact that a small change like this has been able to do. That's amazing. Uh, it's just uh, it's amazing how much AI has uh, you know come and just taken over so many aspects of our very crucial services. Uh, in the media space, we are battling with Chat GPT. I'm sure you've heard about it. Um, uh, let me uh, move on to uh, Nirib here. Nirib, how can digital health IDs and EHRs make a positive? impact in India's healthcare ecosystem. Also, tell us how solutions uh, like uh, the MediExcel medical plot platform are enabling this transformation. Thanks. Good question. And uh, thanks for bringing MediExcel into the picture. The thing is that uh, digital health IDs uh, are a very big necessity to ensure that you can create a unique patient identifier. Uh, today, the thing is, when we go to multiple hospitals, uh, we are known by the patient identifier within that hospital. A digital health ID enables this patient to be the same patient irrespective of the hospital they visit for getting care. Or, you know, a, whether a person goes to a primary healthcare center or a public hospital or a private hospital or even gets care, you know, inside a foreign country, the digital health identifier is able to, you know, ensure that this is identified at the healthcare level as a single patient. Uh, the EHR is the electronic health record is, uh, you know, the the record of a patient of, you know, so the health ID combined with the electronic health record allows us to have a, a single dossier of sorts of the patient's health conditions. Now, 
why this is very, very important is because this helps in the creation of coordination of care. And what happens is that majority of the abnormalities that happen in middle-aged patients is because they are not able to share with their doctors or caregivers about what's already happened to them in the right time. So you might get started on a medication you're allergic to and you identify this two days too late. So the thing is that uh, EHRs and digital health IDs have a very, very solid role in making sure that India becomes a more healthier country in the years to come. Now, how MediXL medical platform and uh, is, is, you know, enabling this transformation is because today we are already looking into the data for about 45 million patients across the world. We're already looking at this particular data and trying to make sure that the patients have unique records. And while those unique record with those unique records over the last, I would say, 10 years that MediXL has been around, we've seen that the impact has been that hospitalization rates have decreased. We've seen that rehospitalization rates have decreased further. What we have seen is that screening has benefited patients from actually not being hospitalized and actually having home rehabilitation take care of them. Uh, another thing that we have seen MediXL being able to do is that help in public health significantly. Uh, looking at the data from the platform of this 45 million patients, we've been able to identify a large number of markers, whether they are screening markets, markers at a personal level or they are screening markers at a public health level to identify the you know, emergence of new symptoms or new diseases, which can actually you know, become an epidemic of sorts in a local population. Uh, this is, you know, uh, predictive modeling based. It is using predictive analytics. It is using AI. It's using all these good things, which thanks to, a, you know, AWS, we have been able to use. We are, we are big users of Transcribe. We are very, very big users of the AI models inside uh, AWS. And MediXL, medical, uh, sorry, MediXL is able to actually uh, make sense out of the, the EHRs of patients. And if they are linked with the digital health IDs, then the patient remains the same wherever they go within the country. Fascinating. Uh, Mujit, uh, to come to you on this, uh, do you think there is an increased focus now on uh, sustainable health care? And if so, how are both organizations and customers adapting to it? So see, from a sustainability point of view, right, one of uh, the biggest challenges to healthcare even today from you know my lens, uh, if I see it, it's... Uh, you know, quite human centric, right? It has to be human centric. I'm saying uh, it is very human dependent currently. And because of that, the kind of nurse to patient ratio, doctor to patient ratio and everything has been under tremendous amount of stress, right? If we uh, look at the past one decade or so, pick up any field, right? Be it cardiology, be it, di uh, be it diabetes, be it uh, neurology, anything. The doctor to patient ratio, because uh, the number of old age population is increasing, uh, population itself is increasing while we are not adding that many doctors or nurses, right? So that's where I feel in sustenance itself, technology is going to play a very, very important role. Uh, and in that, making sure that, you know, the, uh, the amount of resources that we have, we make it so efficient that, you know, the kind of gaps which are there are reduced. And of course, there is a higher need of even increasing the manpower and workforce, but that can only happen organically. But while at one place, you know, and COVID was a big example of that, right, that uh, we are in many cases, right, COVID was one example, but in cardiology, diabetes, to so everything, right, we are in that pandemic state even now as well, right? And how to address that, right? Uh, I think uh, that's where a lot of thought needs to be given. Technology is one of the enablers, but I think there are more enablers, which I'm sure, you know, the co-panelists can add as well. So, yeah. Sure. Uh, Nirip, would you like to add something to this? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the thing is that we, we are, you know, we, we spoke about COVID, uh, about, uh, COVID as, a, as a pandemic, but, you know, we've got tuberculosis, we've got malaria, uh, you know, these are, we've got AIDS. These are pandemics which still exist. And the main reason why they are not spoken about uh, at a large scale is because of the fact that they don't affect the West as much as they affect the rest of the world. Uh, when it comes to sustainability, I think sustainability happens at a local level. We need to have sustainable solutions in India to fight in diseases which happen to Indians. And uh, this is something where I think technology has a massive role to play. I mean, AWS, uh, Dozy, Plus91, and a 
plethora of other, I think, younger companies have a very large role to play because we're looking at the future rather than the past. And, and what's happening over here is that to build sustainable models, you want to make sure that we are not dependent on humans. We are centered around humans, as Mudit correctly put it, but we have to be less dependent on humans. We need to be more dependent on not necessarily technology, but other ways. You know, I mean, the future is, is, is we haven't seen it. There's going to be a real, you know, uh, I would say a, not just a leapfrog, a massive, massive leapfrog in, in the future where we will probably be looking at a solution of care provided in such a manner that we'll be able to identify something can happen to me, say, 15 years before it does and probably take care of it. And these kind of sustainable models will maybe built, be built with technology, but definitely, if not with technology, they will be enabled to be built by technology today and in the next five years to come. And, and, and I think AI has a very big role to play in this because we are trying to create intelligence. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit daunting also to think that, uh, you know, lifespans will go up enormously. I think that'll just end up putting so much pressure on countries' resources. Lifespans have, have already been going up, but uh, economies also need to keep up, keep pace with, uh, you know, with increasing lifespans. It comes with its own uh, set of challenges, but it's a huge, uh, huge positive. Uh, Nirip, just to, uh, you know, uh, continue this uh, thought with you, what are your thoughts on the innovative uh, access model in healthcare? And how does it help to build a future-ready digital health ecosystem? Sure. Uh, so the thing is that, see, the IAM is, uh, the main goal is to promote personalized, uh, patient-centered, value-based care. You know, the whole idea is to increase the access to healthcare services, lower the healthcare costs and you know improve the healthcare outcomes and it's in line with what we've been talking you know in this entire panel that uh it's the whole idea is to build a much better ecosystem and i'll use the word ecosystem rather than you know one com one company or one organization or one country can't just do it it has to be you know by collaboration by partnerships uh, in india for example the government's been implementing i am using the you know ayushman bharat or the ayushman bharat digital mission mission initiative and it's been uh, going fairly well. And uh, the whole idea is to make sure that accessibility, convenience, and affordability, you know, is, is brought about. And this cannot happen without, you know, multiple stakeholders. You, you need companies like Dozy, Plus91, AWS, for that matter, Money Control, for that matter, uh, you know, the government of India, Philips, all of us coming together along with, you know, the, the population itself. So this multi uh, stakeholder approach in India is actually developing. And I think it started developing a lot once the Aadhaar platform got rolled out because we saw it could be done. You know, COVID would not have happened if Aadhaar never happened some years back, according to me. And and the thing is that today IAM is getting rolled out uh, in India, in, in many parts of the world, in healthcare, by making sure that we are identifying local problems finding solutions to local problems by approaching, you know, from this uh, multi-stakeholder approach. And this in, in turn has the effect of giving you accessibility to the populations of better care, uh, making preventive care become important, making sure that people will get sicker less over the years. They won't pay less on healthcare necessarily. They will probably be paying less on the care part and more on the preventive part. And making sure that now the patient is behaving like a consumer and can be heard. So the, the patient centricity is coming into the picture. And uh, fundamentally, you look at it as an innovative access model or you look at it as Ayushman Bharat digital mission or however you want to look at it. The thing is that the outcome of accessibility, convenience and affordability is getting you know uh, addressed and the most important thing here is the multi-stakeholder, honest collaboration approach. Uh, fascinating. Uh, let me move on to Sunil. Sunil, how do you see the future of uh, healthcare evolve from a cloud perspective? Are there any, are there any new AWS-led uh, collaborations in this space? Yeah, so so interesting. Like uh, the, the the things we're talking about right now on preventive healthcare, etc. See, see, one of the biggest benefits for most of the solution providers is the fact that they can experiment really quickly on the cloud, okay? And I, th I think AWS has led the way over the years to try and make sure that partners have the tools available to quickly experiment and try new models of working in the market. And I think that's one of the biggest differentiators here. If you look at it, the pace of innovation of AWS over the last uh, 10 plus years uh, has has driven about 6,500 new services, right? And, and, and it's quite a volume of services that have come out, which primarily is based on customer feedback 
on what customers are asking for. So for for a healthcare healthcare builder, uh, the benefit really is that he's able to pick and choose what are the areas of focus and can he quickly experiment or fail fast or succeed fast around that on the cloud and switch off. So he basically pays only for what he consumes. So those benefits are enormously huge for a partners, right? So for to drive that further, we basically had a healthcare competency created for partners. So partners can pick a healthcare competency and build skills around that. So they become a partner to go to market uh, a larger way. So we are helping helping organizations build solutions, which is which is phenomenal because of the pace of innovation that we have globally. Okay, and we're also working with partners to figure out how to go to market faster. How do you scale faster? How do we take solutions that are built in India for the global global market? And health is interesting, right? Because it's applicable across the globe. There's no limitation there. There are there are uh, HIPAA, HIPAA HIPAA guidelines that are there, which again AWS meets to a large extent. So we've got that covered. So if you're building on AWS, the benefit really is that you can build for India and take it globally. Okay, and also le leverage the fact that we give you so many options uh, to experiment and pilot out new models before you actually go live, giving you a very very flexible environment to build on. Thank you very much uh, for that. And a big thank you to all the panelists, uh, Mudit and uh, Nirib and Sunil. Uh, clearly, the future has to be, the future of healthcare is an integration of physical infrastructure, digital infrastructure, and uh, the role of uh, the private sector to ensure very sustainable solutions are actually delivered to, uh, to, to people living in far-flung areas, which so far have not been able to benefit as much to uh, you know, benefit from the healthcare revolution that we've seen in the last uh, few decades. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Money Control presents Transforming a Billion Lives, presented by AWS Intel. Hey, I am Abhilai Soundarajan, CEO and co-founder, Privacy APM. We are a privacy tech company offering privacy engineering as a service for businesses. We enable businesses to meet complex regulatory requirements in India and across the globe. We enable businesses to unlock data to create value for their customers and build solutions for the next generation of digital evolution. The challenges we faced while deploying our solutions are that these are really complex uh, data flow requirements and this need to be present in specific geographies and we have customers across the globe. Uh, similarly, um, even customers within India, they want the solution to be available near real time and really want high uptimes. We use EC2, S3, DynamoDB, uh, SageMaker processing job as part of our solution offering from AWS. This significantly helps us um, make solutions uh, real time uh, majority of these components are serverless, which significantly reduces our cost and our customers' cost as well. So offering this on top of AWS helps us solve all these requirements along with other compliance requirements like security certifications and audit compliance requirements, which makes um, us uh, completely uh, focus on the solution rather than running around all these uh, other challenges in terms of infra and compute. AWS has been a very strategic partner for us. They help us in building the infrastructure, building the right architecture from a technology perspective, um, also help in go-to-market strategy, helping us connect with the right partners and customers, also in terms of connecting with government agencies, um, sharing thoughts, and also in terms of communicating this information uh, with policy-making organizations. So, so this is a really strategic relationship and this helps us build our solution at the same time make privacy a primary driver in delivering customer-centric planet-scale, population-scale services. Money Control presents Transforming a Billion Lives, presented by AWS Intel. Hello and welcome. You're watching Money Control and this is Shweta Punch. We are presenting to you Transforming a Billion Life Summit presented by AWS. India's public sector has been witnessing a major shift from traditional to digital 
ecosystem post the pandemic, enabling a massive socioeconomic change. The development came via a, a, a combination of the rapid private sector transformation, the recent government initiatives, and the increasing awareness around the benefits of digitization. Digitization of citizen services is critical to this phase. Citizens and organizations now expect public information and services to be easy to find, simple to understand, and be available at low or no cost. Hence, digitizing citizen services can aid governments to meet the public demands and expectations seamlessly, while also becoming more resilient and proactive in terms of crises. In times of crises, transforming a billion lives enabled by AWS provides a platform to address some of the most pressing challenges in the ecosystem, modernize legacy infrastructure, enable innovation from grassroots level, and access the technology expertise of AWS to deliver citizen services faster and more efficiently. Through transforming a billion lives, AWS, in collaboration with CNBC TV18, will open a platform to bring to the forefront their digitization objectives with scalable on-demand services in the fields of healthcare, education, agriculture, utility services, and more. The campaign will encompass a series of virtual events and activities, including roundtables, case studies, and articles. This roundtable uh, on healthcare to the last mile, realizing digital in healthcare is uh, uh, a step in that direction. Joining me on the panel is uh, Shalini Kapoor, Director and Chief Technologist, WWPS India from AWS, Mr. Sohit Kapoor, Co-Founder of Briefcase, Mr. Kostav Nair, Co-Founder and Director, Periwinkle Technologies, and Ms. Veena uh, Mukhtali, Chief Executive Officer, Periwinkle Technologies. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Let me begin uh, with you, uh, Ms. Shalini Kapoor. Um, maybe you could begin by setting the context for today. Tell us some of the key challenges facing India's healthcare ecosystem in both private and public health segments. And broadly uh, speaking, how can we overcome them? Thank you, Shweta. Uh, and you did call out the digitization of uh, healthcare, which we all are seeing and is is the reason for this transformation. The biggest issue today is that the hospitals and providers need to create the digital health records and the adoption is low. Digital healthcare is a dream and we all should pursue towards it, but the doctors and the healthcare systems are the conduit to it. We all know about ABDM, which is the government's initiative, but we need point solutions to enable and for them to be used by one and all. The second issue and the challenge in front of us is that we want states to adopt HMIS, which is the whole hospital management system, and participate in this entire private and public sector initiation and the whole ecosystem that we are trying to build. The government is trying hard. There are, but this is a large population. We need more solutions. We need ready-to-go solutions there would be a lot of new innovations which can happen in this area. And that can increase the adoption of HMIS, uh, but the startup ecosystem, the developers, the entire venture capital all have to come together for these innovations to happen. The other challenge is that we have very good national health programs and healthcare problems for solving, say, tuberculosis, um, or having disease predictions, but we have not been able to scale them or automate them with full digital infrastructure. Imagine a scenario where you can do predictive analytics on a certain disease in a particular state, and that helps in taking corrective and preventive measures. Population health analytics, this is, a, this is an area which can get enabled only when the data is not just digitized, put in, a, put in a cloud, is in a SaaS form, and is brought all together to build those point solutions. So once we have these challenges solved and we overcome them of digitization, adoption, participation, and as well as the state governments participating into solving this, we are sure to have a very good digital health infrastructure in the country. Great. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much for that perspective. Uh, moving on to Kostav here. Uh, Kostav, from a technology provider perspective, how do you understand and evaluate the evolution of uh, digital healthcare in India? Well, um, with the increasing adoption of uh, 
digital health technologies and the growing number of health tech startups, digital healthcare has seen a significant uh, evolution in India in the recent years. Several factors have contributed to this growth, including uh, increased internet penetration, evolution of uh, AI ML technologies, the government's push towards digitization in healthcare, and the rising demand for affordable and accessible healthcare services. How to evaluate this evolution, we'll have to consider various aspects, such as uh, the adoption of technologies, the impact on healthcare outcomes, and the challenges and opportunities presented by the market. Let's look at them one by one. The adoption of digital health technologies such as telemedicine, EHR, AI-enabled solutions such as smart scope has been on the rise. This trend will continue as more people, including healthcare providers, become comfortable uh, uh, with using technology. We all know that COVID also helped in this. Digital healthcare has a huge potential to improve outcomes by increasing accessibility and scalability, thereby saving time and money. Digital healthcare in India presents several challenges, including the limited digital infrastructure in rural area, areas, the need for the government to make policy changes to adopt new technologies, etc. However, these challenges also present opportunities for the technology providers to develop innovative solutions that addresses this issue. For example, the current version of smart scope that we have doesn't need a real time internet connectivity. Government is doing its way, right? So as, as uh, Shalini just said, the Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare of uh, India introduced the telemedicine practice guidelines in March 2020. The Aishman Bharat Digital Mission is being implemented with the aim to connect healthcare stakeholders on a single platform. It is comprised of digital registries of health uh, providers and hospitals, unique IDs, consent framework, and universal access to health facilities, and so on and so forth. Overall, this evolution, evolution of digital healthcare in India presents significant opportunities for technology providers to develop innovative solutions that can transform the healthcare landscape in the country. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, my next question is for Mr. Sohit Kapoor. Um, uh, Mr. Sohit, uh, you know, you've always emphasized on the need for an integrated uh, digital health infrastructure. Take us through how uh, we can build a future ready digital healthcare ecosystem and the impact it will have. Sure. Uh, no, so, uh, you know, let's start by looking at the journey of a patient first in India. As you will see, in case of all of us, it's very rare that you end up going to one single organization, whether it's a hospital or a healthcare center, for all your healthcare needs. Usually, your health journey is spread out across multiple providers. So, in my case, I'll go to a cardiologist who's part of a different hospital system. My wife will go to a gynec who's a part of a different hospital system. All of us will have family physicians who are not a part of any hospital, largely speaking, and the dentist sits separately. So here you will see that I've spoken about four different people who are a part of my healthcare journey. Now imagine if these four people were managing their practice, their um, system using different digital solutions, even if the digitization was in place, would it help you completely? The answer is no. Therefore, what I mentioned earlier also is to you was that this infrastructure, the digital infrastructure needs to be taken up on a holistic basis for the whole ecosystem. Let's look at some stats. India has about 2 million doctors, more than 70,000 hospitals, small and big, and lakhs of labs. What is needed is truly to bring it all together as a part of the whole ecosystem. In that spirit, the government of India has taken some decisive action by launching the Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission. You asked us a question about how do you get the infrastructure ready, which is, which is digital, which is also equally important from our perspective is interoperable. And the answer to that lies in ABDM. What does ABDM do? ABDM connects different players, different participants of the healthcare ecosystem on a single gateway. And what does that ensure? That ensures that when I go to my cardiologist, the cardiologist has access to my information 
from the path lab, from my family physician or any other doctor or any other healthcare provider that I have visited, all bases my consent. So I am able to take advantage of my longitudinal health history for my care and my doctor is able to do a precise diagnosis. Gone will be the days where the doctor goes in blind or just relies on a patient to tell him, tell him about her health history or his health history. And we've seen how that works out, right? Someone asked me, what is your health history? I'll try to kind of reel it out from the top of my head. And half of the times I'll miss the information or I'll get the information uh, wrong. And the doctor is purely relying on that. Here we are talking about a scientific system where she's able to access all your health information, come to a, a diagnosis that is far more accurate and add to your longitudinal health history, which then uh, helps you going forward as well. So the, uh, we believe that the ABDM is a, is a very strong medium uh, to get your infrastructure ready, digital infrastructure ready in an interoperable manner. And it is very easy to plug into it. There are open set of APIs that are available from the National Health Authority. Your healthcare solution just needs to tap into it and be uh, future ready. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, let me come back uh, to Shalini. Uh, Shalini, how is uh, AWS driving uh, digital uh, transformation in healthcare? And can you please tell us about AWS powered solutions, which helped in reshaping healthcare uh, tech in India? Absolutely. Uh, and we have some really interesting uh, uh, case studies here. And the first and foremost, which all of us are aware of, is the COVID. We all have used COVID application uh, during the pandemic, which was there um, last couple of years. The COVID architecture and the COVID's vaccination platform scaling was developed in record time on AWS platform. It has it, it brought the scalability, the modularity, the interoperability into this platform. And when um, the PM, the, our Prime Minister unveiled COVID, uh, we literally had, you know, at the first instance, we had 1.9 million people accessing the system. On September 17, it actually recorded 22.5 million vaccinations in one day. And by, by this date, we have more than 2 billion doses which have been administered. This kind of a platform needed scale. It, it needed to go uh, beyond and open up its API, become first of its kind, open source the code for global adoption and help billions across the globe. So it, it gives me immense pleasure and pride to have been part of this phenomenal uh, platform uh, which was built in India on, on AWS. Now, more than that, we are also building uh, and we have built a service called Health Lake which is essentially it secure, securely stores and you can medical data, it can transform, you can query and analyze all the health data in minutes. It uses interoperable standards such as the fast healthcare interoperability resources, which is also called FHIR. You can run medical imaging applications in the cloud to increase scale and reduce the, your costs. So, what it helps from a security perspective, from a from a uh, security of a patient's data that can be maintained, as well as a lot of uh, ontology can be defined, and then you can do analysis whether it could be on ophthalmology, on life sciences, on genetics, on um, uh, on on any any of the um, uh, any of the diseases that you want to map. You can get and medical data is unstructured in nature right so you need a scalable as well as an application which can understand natural language processing because maybe the health record that you are getting is in form of a prescription written by a doctor not in a very good writing so how do you read the prescription how do you interpret it how do you chat with the patient so there are multiple ai technologies which come together on lab reports on medical records on insurance claims and as well as doctors notes and based on this search and query, uh, these AI models can give you um, the right visibility of what the disease is and make the right predictions. So these are some of the uh, applications and solutions which we have made. And uh, they have helped uh, a lot of startups, a lot of um, customers build their own solution on top of this. And this uh, helps them in reaching the patients and connecting the entire doctor health lab uh, uh, network altogether. 
fascinating absolutely kovin was such a such an accomplishment for india as a country uh, let me move on now to uh, veena veena uh, periwinkle has revolutionized cervical cancer screening uh, with a remote monitoring through your uh, smart scope solution take us through smart scope and how it's enabling efficient and uh, faster healthcare delivery especially for women sure uh, so before i tell you uh, about smart scope let me also tell you about the burden of uterine cervical cancer on countries like india so worldwide around 3 lakh women die every year because their cervical cancer was not detected in time Uh, in india itself uh, every 8 minutes we uh, see a woman dying uh, because of this disease so uh, when uh, the experts analyzed this situation it was seen that uh, majorly the loss to follow up uh, by uh, you know women was the major issue uh, uh, which was causing the mortality that means when a test is available at a health center if a woman uh, is not coming back to take, uh, take her reports and you know take the treatment Uh, obviously uh, she'll succumb uh, to uh, progression of the cancer in in the body so uh, with that in mind we have developed the smart scope which is a very nurse friendly uh, device which does not require any infrastructure or any special setup so that it can be used uh, in any health and wellness center or any district hospital or any any uh, opd or camp for that matter uh, by uh, uh, healthcare personnel who are trained minimally so what that means is um, this test can be now available at any local opd for a woman uh, as a preventive checkup so uh, instead of waiting for the symptoms to show up a woman can uh, you know get herself tested regularly even uh, during uh, routine exam routine health examinations uh, uh, also that means that the experts who are currently involved in uh, you know extensive capacity building programs or in uh, uh, screening and triaging programs can also uh, perform the same activities sitting at a higher center without having to travel uh, to each and every site um, that means more experts uh, time is available for uh, training uh, medical staff more patients will be able to uh, take counseling from these experts and that means we'll be able to uh, scale up the screening programs to a much greater extent than we are able to currently most of the screening programs fail today because the scale is not built up to the uh, you know resources uh, in mind so the resources which means the experts or the infrastructure that is available is uh, never enough uh, you know when you want to do population based screening uh, the who has already mandated that by 2030 we should be eliminating cervical cancer by screening 70% of the population so smart scope is helping achieve that scale by providing uh, an efficient single visit test wherein we are able to take the images of the cervix and provide a um, you know a red amber green classification uh, with a risk score within a few minutes in the same visit to the woman so uh, many of our end users have uh, given us a feedback saying that when women are given this kind of a counseling in the same visit they are more likely to participate in the subsequent follow up treatments as well so that means uh, this test is not only helping the uh, healthcare providers in uh, achieving the scale but it is also helping the women in uh, taking the subsequent treatments Uh, the third way in which uh, this uh, smart scope is helping is for the implementers to provide a central uh, monitoring or supervision of the programs so we provide dashboards on our uh, web application uh, the web application is also integrated with uh, the uh, you know the central repository uh, of reports thereby anybody any expert in the country can be providing guidance to a remote location uh, you know for the subsequent uh, program implementation so these are all the benefits uh, of course other than the regular ones such as having backups of the patient's uh, data for a longer duration and all which smart scope and its uh, software application is bringing so what's the adoption rate for this uh, technology so currently we are present in almost 15 states of india uh many of these states have taken up uh, the uh, uh, implementation of smart scope as a preferred uh, method of screening uh, so i would still say uh, it is uh, not 100% but we are getting there very soon uh, mm-hmm. 
currently with with the, before the smart scope uh, 5% of the women could be tested with the existing lab based tests right so sure. we are hoping to take that percentage close to the 70% that who is hoping to uh, you know achieve in the next five yes yes yeah. absolutely uh, let's uh, let's move on to uh, sohit uh, sohit uh, tell us a little bit you know about health id how health ids can be a major game changer in india and also tell us how the healthcare ecosystem can become abha ready sure so shweta i was talking about the patient journey earlier where i spoke about how we visit different doctors now what is needed to keep all this information together and create what we call the longitudinal health history is a unique identifier you can say or some kind of uh, you know some kind of a handle which will tag it to you so that is what the health id or what is the ayushman bharat health account number that's what it is called is used for so every citizen of india is eligible to create an ayushman bharat health account number it's a 14 digit number kyc verified so you can create it using uh, aadhar or any of your other government provided ids and then what further you can do is because it's difficult to remember a 14 digit number you can create a handle on top of it so let's say it could be as simple as sohit at the rate abdm what that means is that i don't have to remember the 14 digit number i have my i have my ayushman bharat health ad- account address as sohit at abdm and when i visit a healthcare provider i just tell them that here's my uh, handle why don't you tag all my reports to this account and as more and more reports get tagged to my uh, account all that information is discoverable now mind you a very important aspect here is that of consent we've spoken about how health information will be accessible to different providers but it will not happen unless and until the patient consents to it so imagine the kind of power now that is given to the rightful owner of health data who is the patient herself that all your health information is now accessible to the doctors provided you consent to it and all of this is possible only if you have the ayushman bharat health account so that's the role of the health id the ayushman bharat health account number as as we um, see it the second question was how do you get abha ready now this whole concept of being abha ready has multiple aspects to it how do you get abha ready as a patient as a user because ultimately that's the starting point of the journey unless and until you have an abha you do not participate in this whole journey and the system doesn't work so as citizens you can create your own abha there are multiple uh, channels through which you can create it you can create it through phr apps and we'll talk uh, more about them subsequently but phr apps like treefcase enable you to create your uh, abha you can create them through government websites um, and and make sure that you have that abha with you at the end of the abha creation process you get a digital card the card mentions your abha number which is the 14 digit number i spoke about if you've created a handle like so with that abdm it mentions that and it also gives you a qr code that qr code can be scanned at a healthcare facility or you can provide the number or the handle at a healthcare facility and get your account updated with the new health information so that's that's how a patient or a user becomes abha ready likewise if you move to the healthcare providers certain action is needed by from their end as well so for hospitals labs clinics their solution technology solution the digital solution that they are using needs to be abha ready and which as i was mentioning earlier is a process of integrating the open apis of uh, the national health authority of abdm and making sure that your system is capable of either creating this abha or being able to verify the abha provided by the patient and then linking the records so it's a, it's a fairly uh, uh, straightforward or an easy process of integration that these technology solutions need to provide lastly when it comes to doctors per se um, or other healthcare professionals uh, kostam in the start mentioned about the registries in order to be abha ready you need to be able to you need to be registered on these registries so whether you are a doctor or a nurse or any other healthcare professional both you as well as the facility need to be registered with either a health professional registry or a health facility registry and that also ensures that you kind of 
become a participant of this um, ecosystem. So it's a if you now kind of put it all together, Shweta, you'll see that for Aishman Bharat Digital Mission to be successful, it's not that a, a single dream case or a single AWS or a single doctor or a single patient can do it. It requires the whole country to take it up, and therefore it's called a digital mission. It's it's in the mission mode. Uh, once you see participation from the entire country, you will see the benefits of of this whole digitization effort in a manner that no other country in this world has seen. With with UPI, we've set a benchmark. With COVID, we've set a benchmark that the world is looking at. I think with Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, we'll just set that benchmark higher and would truly set a, a gold standard as far as digital health is concerned anywhere in the world. Well, we do hope so, and uh, we hope that the optimism actually does uh, lead to India leading this whole uh, revolution in the healthcare delivery space. Let me go on to uh, Shalini. Shalini, how do you see the future of healthcare evolve from a cloud perspective? Are there any new AWS-led uh, collaborations in this space? Yeah, um, thank you, Shweta. So I think uh, Sohit has laid the foundation quite well. Um, just to explain, uh, to set this entire thing up, you need a lot of um, you need a lot of documents to be stored, right? So if if ABHA has to be uh, enabled for every citizen, and there are documents, and there are lab reports, and medical reports, and we all know how comprehensive they are, there is a huge amount of you know, scanned images which we will have to store and access them in a secure fashion because we know about the consent, that there has to be a consent on a medical record. Not everybody should be able to access it. Now, cloud provides the storage, the, the scalability of building it up as well as the security of making it available only to the right person and also make it comply, make all the data compliant to the HIPAA standards or any other compliance standards which the medical industry looks for. So cloud enables this entire motion and you can do it much faster if your applications and if your services are, are cloudified. More than that, think about the various state governments. The, a patient travels across the country, but they want the APIs to be exposed. They want their data to be available, whether they are in Delhi or in Karnataka, if there is a medical report which has been scanned for that person, it needs to be available. So the interoperability of various bodies or various labs, various hospitals, that needs to be built into place. Now that can happen and that can happen only when the APIs are available and it's available in a fast manner. So the speed and agility is extremely important, which cloud can enable. The other thing is that the hospitals and the labs themselves have to get digitized and they need to have their applications available on the cloud and not be in a monolithic architecture, which are clunky and are difficult to deal with. So that cloud enables because, you know, the cloud architectures are nimble, they are fast, they are microservices based, and it is much easy to retrieve the data around it. Now, at the, at the um, uh, if we talk about the National Health Authority, the NHA, NHA has come out with a uh, uh, with, with an hyperscaler initiative where they are enrolling hyperscalers and they want hyperscalers to be part 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 of this so that large this large cloud mission can drive a lot of health analytics and health analytics is important because today when a patient walks into a walks into a lab they want uh, insurance, medical insurance. So at that point in time, you need a medical insurance approval within minutes, which means that you need to recognize the face, authenticate the person, uh, look at the document, see that there is no uh, um, uh, uh, no um, uh, fraud into that, and immediately give approval for a health for a health insurance so that the patient can undergo treatment. Now, there are multiple technologies which are behind this. You need to have speech to text. You need to have video recognition. You need to have biometric. So all these things are coming together at one point, which is at a hospital, which means that the cloud should be able. The cloud is the only solution which can make this all much faster and in an agile fashion available to you. So, so the availability of all these applications on cloud becomes a must-have, and that's why National Health Authority came out with this with sure. this uh, initiative. Uh, 
and the last point which i would like to say is the health analytics which can be possible in terms of disease predictions because now you have information and you can find out disease hotspots that say in this particular state this disease is going up much faster and what can we do for mitigation of that so uh, these are the things which come together okay super thanks for that uh, let me bring in veena here veena uh, what does the road ahead look like uh, in terms of uh, smart scope evolving in the near future and also are there any similar solutions in the pipeline yeah sure thanks rita so uh, yes definitely uh, as i mentioned before uh, for us the story is just getting started we are present in a few states of india but uh, covering an entire indian population of 40 crore uh, eligible women is a huge task so uh, our next uh, goal is of course uh, covering that entire uh, population uh, and providing the screening facilities to them but of course moving this solution also to other geographies uh, across the world because Uh, there are many countries where such screening programs are not available uh, to the extent desired and even in the developed countries they are facing issues because of the uh, you know uh, lack of enough number of experts um, in all the localities and the productivity of a clinician is always very important therefore uh, digital solutions like the smart scope always add uh, value in any country's uh, you know healthcare uh, journey so that's where we are headed of course but then uh, the software netformedics which is the backbone of the smart scope also allows for tracking vaccination in young women so that's another program related to the cervical cancer health um, i mean rather cervical cancer prevention uh, and health in women uh, which is very important so we can see the initiative for screen the mother and vaccinate the child being supported by smart scope aided programs so we are also getting involved in those uh, okay. thirdly uh, with the smart scope ai becoming Uh, stronger by the day we say uh, we see many value adds for the clinicians and the implementers coming in the future versions which will make a holistic assessment of the case and integrated treatment programs possible uh, we are also coming up with smart scope for the oral cancer screening very soon um, and okay. yes uh, image analysis and uh, using ai for various other um, uh, clinical data analysis is uh, on the horizon for us Sure, sure. Thanks. Okay, uh, my uh, last question is to Sohit. Uh, Sohit, what are your thoughts on uh, digital health lockers and uh, PHR apps? And do you see it as a necessary step towards uh, universal health coverage? Sure. So, Shweta, uh, you know, earlier we mentioned about how UPI has set a benchmark. Um, it's not only a benchmark as far as transaction processing is concerned. It's also a benchmark as to how interoperability works. so how you can transfer money from one bank to another you know through a third party application uh, if you were to draw a parallel of uh, upi in the abdm world you know i spoke about what steps need to be taken to be aabhar ready the core remains that how does a patient play in the aabhar ecosystem in the aabhar landscape and that is where the phr apps and the digital health lockers become a necessity they become a utility product so starting from creating your abha to linking your providers to most importantly providing consent for movement of health information if you want your health information to move from that lab to the doctor you need to be able to consent it and the phr app is the mechanism to be or is the uh, front end for you to consent to that movement of health information so if you want to be a participant in abha you need to have uh, the phr app or the digital health locker and when you talk about universal health coverage we are strong believers that universal health coverage requires uh, a strong ayushman bharat digital mission unless entity you have uh, abdm play out in the way that i spoke about earlier with all my optimism unless that happens universal health coverage would be a, a tricky goal to achieve so that's why i say that you know phr apps will play a critical role yes it will over time also the role of phr apps will keep evolving uh, from from what it is uh, today but as far as the patient is concerned this would be a must have uh, for them to have and as far as the government is concerned if universal health coverage is an important goal which we believe it is uh, then uh, the whole abdm framework and the phr framework to that extent uh, needs to be a very robust and successful 
All right. Uh, well, with that, it's a wrap. Uh, thank you so much for a very, very valuable insights into making healthcare affordable, accessible, and integrating healthcare delivery with technology. That is the future to ensure that a billion plus Indians get access to affordable and timely healthcare. Really appreciate the time and the perspective. Thanks for watching. Money Control presents Transforming a Billion Lives. Presented by AWS Intel. Healthcare technology has always been advancing, but during uh, COVID times, so uh, the technologies that were uh, needed were to be uh, done by the person or patient himself or herself uh, in the privacy of their homes, and then to be able to upload those uh, um, uh, tests. So um, digital technologies uh, actually uh, were the most suitable for these kind of uh, solutions. We have uh, started validating the smart scope uh, for uh, detection of cervical cancer. We are using it in the periphery so that the images uh, captured over there can be transferred via cloud uh, to the specialist who's sitting in the tertiary care hospital. And in the case of smart scope, this is done by AWS, the, which are the cloud service providers for the smart scope. And um, all these technologies have, uh, uh, you know, they have follow certain norms of the government. So this, these kind of um, apparatuses or devices like the smart scope, they are also very um, useful for telemedicine. So this um, device can help in sort of simulating the workshop scenario where you can use this device and show the uh, trainees the actual cases which are going on live. So that's another advantage of uh, these um, devices. Money Control presents Transforming a Billion Lives, presented by AWS Intel. Hello and a very warm welcome to moneycontrol.com. We are in partnership with AWS to bring to you a dialogue to leverage new capabilities with the help of technology for the transformation of a billion lives. We're talking about AI, cloud computing, and several tech-led innovations in the healthcare space and how it can increase accessibility. And joining me on this panel is Mr. Samart Mason, BD Leader Healthcare AWS, Ms. Akanksha Bilani, Global GTM Alliance AWS at Intel, Dr. Anil Muniapa, Head Healthcare Transformation Cloud for C, and Dr. Surendran Venkatraman, Assistant Professor of Community Medicine, Nodal Officer in Charge at eHospital IGMCRI. Let me begin with uh, Samarth here. Samarth, I'll start with you. How can technology help to bridge the gap of healthcare accessibility in India? And what are some of the key challenges in this? If you look at the problem statement of uh, accessibility in healthcare in India, I think the lens has to be that of rural India and that of isolated communities of India. And why I'm saying that is I'm going to substantiate that with a few data points. So if you look at the HAQ, which is what we call the Health Access and Quality Index, um, we rank 145th amongst 195 countries on that. Um, just to give you some more data points, uh, so we have only 1.3 beds per thousand of our population as against the WHO norm of 3.5. We have only 0 0.69 doctors per thousand of our population against WHO recommended 3.4. And a more glaring data point, 65% of our population that resides in rural India has access only to 30% of the infrastructure. One more data point I'd like to share is that almost 122 Indians die per 100,000 due to poor quality healthcare and lack of access to healthcare every year. Just for benchmarks, Brazil's at 74, Russia's at 91, and our neighbors, uh, Bangladesh 57, Pakistan 119. Now, 
why I'm sharing all these data points is because this is really the lens and, and that's how much work we need to do when it comes to quality healthcare and accessibility of healthcare in India. And I think the biggest problem we have is that we are lacking a very important primary healthcare system in the country. We do have a decent, uh, we've made decent progress on tertiary and episodic healthcare, but I think on the primary healthcare side, we have a, we have, we have a lot of ground to cover. And that's where the big problems are currently arising, where technology needs to play a part. So what are these problems? Patients are continuously delaying clinical advice due to lack of affordability and access. That's increasing the disease burden on the country. Um, providers are more focused on volume of care rather than value of care. And more importantly, our insurance schemes are only designed for tertiary care procedures. Now that's creating a lot of problems. So now let's shift the lens and see what role can technology play to bridge this gap, right? So with the onset of COVID and whatever happened in the last couple of years, a lot of things changed when it came to technology and, and the involvement of tech to solve some of these problems. I think one of the examples I'd like to share where tech can help bridge this gap of accessibility was teleconsultation or telemedicine. We were involved ourselves with Government of India to build the national telemedicine platform, East and Jeevni, where we were able to cover almost the entire country and in, in two formats, the doctor-to-doctor -doctor consultations for the Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers, that's about 150,000 primary healthcare centers, and then the OPD, the East and Jeevni OPD. And, and this is now currently scaled to serve about 76 million citizens of the country. And we are trending at about 430,000 consultations a day. Now, that's the kind of innovation at scale we need in a country like India to solve some of these problems in, in healthcare. And, and now there are multiple other use cases coming out, right? So there's medicine delivery at home, diagnostics at home, tele-ICUs, uh, and, and, and multiple others. And I think the lens is now shifting where all these great innovations cannot happen in, happen in pockets. They have to come together at scale. And we are talking 500 million citizens, 700 million citizens who need this. And I think that's where I'd like to end my point by saying that, you know, with the government's initiative of trying to create an open digital healthcare ecosystem for the country and, and something they're trying to do through the ABDM, Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, that's where a lot of tech will come together to solve these grassroots level problems of accessibility in healthcare. So that's where we are. And I think that's why the discussion is very important today and, and how we brainstorm and take it from here. Absolutely. It could be uh, definitely transformational in terms of accessibility of healthcare. Let me bring you in here, Akansha, building on what Samarth has said. Um, you know, if you could just throw some light on how are emerging technologies such as AI, IoT, cloud computing, providing additional opportunities to facilitate a more holistic uh, digital uh, uh, you know, health ecosystem, also, can this help to increase equitable access to health services, improve health outcomes, and reduce costs? Uh, yes, absolutely, Shweta. Uh, what we've seen uh, with us in the industry is time and time again, when we have a technology that's accessible, that is relatable, and when the barriers of its consumption are low, or if, or if its adoption are low, this gives rise to a tremendous amount of demand. Uh, gives rise to a tremendous amount of opportunity. And through that opportunity lies various business models and various usage models. And cloud computing obviously is no exception to this technology. Um, using cloud computing to actually be able to drive more industry and segment benefit is really what, um, along with our partners, as well as our customers, Intel, as well as AWS, have been trying to decrypt. So using technologies that are accelerating uh, data insight, which is artificial intelligence on cloud, seems to be the most crucial one. We have a data a survey that shows that by 23, we're going to have 50 billion devices and 500 billion sensors smartly connected over the internet. And 40% of those devices will be communicating machine to machine. Healthcare is no exception. The amount of data that is available needs to be managed, stored, as well as processed. And without AI, uh, without technologies like IoT and Edge, as well as technologies that are incubated under cloud, this is not going to be possible, not for speed, not for performance, and definitely not for cost. 
So trying to, and, and we've actually tried to work with multiple customers along with AWS, whether it's the COVID platform where today we have uh, over a billion citizens being vaccinated on a daily basis or working with the national data platforms across the world as well as in India for better situational awareness of disease or even just using healthcare techniques to make sure that patient to doctor ratio data is actually being more predicted uh, so that we have more safe citizens as well as preventive disease in the country using obviously ABDM uh, policies is very, very crucial. So we definitely think that making sure that we are driving an optimized technology adoption experience in the world of healthcare is going to be the way that they can look at cheap, um, easy and fast mechanisms of adopting technology to help their healthcare goals. Absolutely, uh, Kancha, thanks for that perspective. Uh, let me go on to Dr. Anil. Um, uh, Dr. Anil, I'd like to bring you in here. How is the rapid uh, ad uh, adoption of the cloud enhancing patient care and lowering costs? And what are the, some of the key cases of cloud-led healthcare delivery that uh, you, know, you could uh, throw some light on? I mean, uh, we've all been speaking about cloud. The market is growing at, uh, you know, probably by next year, we're going to hit $97 billion. But what hospitals really want is actually to see the benefits of these clouds in terms of range, range of benefits. So uh, I think it's on us to show them the real benefits of what they can bring in, right? Across different practices of healthcare, be it Ayush, homeopathic, allopathic, and across settings of care, uh, be it government, corporate, all the clinicians need is patient care. And anything that enhances that is always welcome with both hands, right? For us clinicians, right? Clinical decision making is a key skill that we learn uh, and practice since our medical school days to probably end of our lives. And every decision making involving patients is about the availability of the right data, the past, the present, and the future. Second, execution of plan of care is always akin to decision making. And to do this effectively, we need to effectively communicate with nurses, labs, OT, and multiple teams internally. And in most cases, we also communicate with patients, family physician, uh, caregivers from other hospitals, uh, patients, family members, and home care providers. Now tell me, both these key factors of care are instantly and effectively taken care by advent of cloud, right? As ma'am was rightly pointing out, cloud gives us data not only the past, the present, and also predicts the future, and also allows us to communicate seamlessly with the right data, uh, with the right people, right? So let me give you a, a simple clinical example. Uh, let me take this example of a mentally ill patient in Bangalore, visited various uh, emergency uh, rooms and dozens of OPD consultations over the course of a year. Each time he goes there, he undergoes stress and obtains a lot of prescriptions for medications. Now vendor cloud, Thanks to the adoption of cloud-based EMR solutions, healthcare providers at each facility the patient visited could actually get direct insights into interaction between the patient and the physicians at other facilities. Now, what's the benefit the patient gets is that the patient actually gets, uh, you know, protection from being over-prescribed medications, right? That could have caused serious harm. Second, they were able to avoid unnecessary repeat tests, right? Well, the intangible benefits of uh, is a long list. And since I'm on uh, CNBC here, a business channel, let me try to uh, answer the billion dollar question or the financial benefits for the hospital for them to adopt, right? One, yes, one of the main perceived requirement of moving to cloud from on-premise is cost saving. And yes, it definitely saves costs if done with proper due diligence. And to ease this process, we from C4C have rolled out a cost management framework, which is basically a governance framework that proactively manages costs across the cloud uh, lifecycle. What is cloud? I mean, cost saving on cloud basically revolves around instance right sizing, right? We need to clean up the unused instances, underutilized resources, instance scheduling, instance modernization. And in, G in, and in CHIP, we from C4C will completely own this completely and ensure that we provide the hospital the optimal resources at the right time. Let me go on to uh, 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 Samarth. Samarth, how has the role of technology you know, as a technology provider in healthcare evolved post the pandemic? And uh, also, what is AWS's view 
on um, uh, adoption of the cloud in India's healthcare sector? So, to understand the how the role of a technology provider is pivoting or evolving, I think the, to understand the context is very important. What's really going on in healthcare or digital healthcare in the country? Now, let's look at a couple of things that happened in the recent past, right? So in March 2020, the government, most specifically Ministry of Health, actually rolled out the entire telemedicine guidelines, which is what catapulted our entire telemedicine, teleconsultation um, theme into multiple solutions, offerings. And I just spoke about East and Jimny a while ago. Then uh, the insurance, insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India, the IRDAI, they have also allowed insurance providers to reimburse care provided by digital channels, which I think was a great step forward. But most importantly, the rollout of two national programs, the Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, which is uh, aimed at creating the digital healthcare ecosystem or infrastructure for the country. And then the PMJ, Pradhan Mantri Janaroge Yojana, which is the national health insurance scheme targeted towards 500 million plus citizens with a cashless, painless insurance of five lakhs per person. Now, these are some real changes in context as to what's happening in healthcare. And, and because of this change in context, uh, if we really look at what's happening with technology providers in healthcare and how are they evolving post pandemic, uh, it's, it's very imp important to understand what does this change in context mean for, mean for them and then therefore how they are pivoting. So if you really take a step back and understand what is the national digital health blueprint saying, what is the ABDM trying to do? In very simple terms, we are trying to create a open API based digital infrastructure for the country, which operates interoperability. Now, this is a lot of jargon. What does it really mean? Let's, let's break it down. So what this means is that anyone who wishes to provide digital healthcare services can be discovered by patients span India. Anyone, this could be a health tech solution provider. It, it could be a, it could be a bespoke solution. It could also be a large HMI solution, anyone. Now, what this also means is that healthcare providers and healthcare applications can actually plug into this ecosystem and they can talk to each other via open APIs. And what this also means is that patients and doctors can now use any software of their choice to seek care or provide care and therefore also generate demand from these sources. So what, what does all of this mean? For a technology provider in healthcare, they are now pivoting into building digital healthcare solutions to plug into this digital ecosystem of, uh, th that is being created at a national level. Let me give you some examples. Hospital management information system, something we are trying to do with CHIB at a national level. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about it, I'm sure. Uh, applications that are enabling the creation of patient health records and health lockers, because now folks like you and I who seek care can hack, access our health records through a health logger by giving our consent. That's really where the country is headed right now. Clinical decision support systems. I think Dr. Anil spoke about it. Very, very important theme that's emerging for te technology providers in healthcare. And then, of course, claims platforms to drive standardized, painless, speedy insurance claims for the country and for the citizens of the country. And as, as AWS, as we've been working with, you know, a lot of people in the ecosystem, a lot of interesting use cases have started emerging, like the use of AIML for preventive care. I think Akanksha was speaking about it as well. Um, Tele-ICUs and EICUs for the underserved communities and the and rural India, so that we can get them access to healthcare very quickly through these technology technological interventions. Genomic sequencing for predicting diseases in the area of tuberculosis. Uh, India ran a big program called Insacog for 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 COVID nineteen, anyways, uh, and, and many other use cases there. Telemedicine, teleradiology, we already spoke about, and then of course things like bringing e-pharmacy and drug delivery at your doorstep at home. So that's how the, you know, the whole landscape of, is pivoting. And, and these are some of the cases that we are seeing come alive. And these are the kind of partners who are building on AWS. Now going to the next question around how, what's AWS doing in, in this entire cloud journey. So our focus has always been to work with the government, work with the Ministry of Health, National Health Authority, and help them solve problems for citizen impact. A little while ago, Kanksha spoke about COVID and how we built COVID in times where we were in dire straits as a country and, and we had to vaccinate 1.3 billion citizens. Uh, and then we went on to build multiple other platforms uh, for, for, for the country at large. 
Now, a lot of these innovations are happening through our partners in the network who are leveraging a lot of our native capabilities, our services to build these solutions. Um, some of the use cases leveraging Amazon's or AWS uh, data lake capabilities to build health analytics or data analytics, uh, leveraging some of our native services like Comprehend to build speech to text for doctors so that patient health records can be generated at speed. Genomic sequencing for virus analysis. Um, a lot of the startups are building on AWS to solve problems in maternal mortality and child health care, tuberculosis elimination, non-communicable disease elimination. And then, of course, what we are doing with CHIB that's running HMIS applications um, uh, on cloud, on AWS for, for the country at large. Uh, just in conclusion, what I'd like to say is that the adoption of cloud in healthcare, and I think that was your last, you know, the last bit of your question, uh, is actually we, we are at a stage in the country right now where you know this is almost becoming like a norm. Uh, if you look at the three biggest national healthcare platforms, Covin, Arogya Setu, East and Jeevni, they're all on cloud. NHA's national platforms, ABD and PMJ, both on cloud. Uh, if you look at Arogya Shri in Telangana, that runs on cloud. Uh, if you look at uh, what Bihar did recently, they've onboarded a completely born in the cloud uh, HMIS solution for all their public sector hospitals. And you know, just to kind of throw a number at you, the total addressable spend on healthcare cloud in India was estimated at around $1.1 billion by a PwC report, which, which I was going through recently. So the opportunity is huge, but as uh, the ecosystem partners, our focus is always to try and solve problems at scale. And that's what AWS is also all about. Fascinating, uh, truly. I mean, who would have thought that we would be discussing cloud in healthcare say 20 years ago? And uh, for all we know, India could really emerge as a leader in this uh, space in digital health innovation. Uh, Akanksha, to bring you in here, let me get some Intel perspective on this. Uh, what tangible impact did the adoption of technology have on public sector healthcare and its facilities? And also, if you could share some case studies showing Intel's technological impact in healthcare. I think a lot of the use cases have already been covered by Summerth because everything that is typically powered by AWS has Intel optimization baked into the goodness. So maybe from an Intel perspective, uh, we'd like to probably kick off by saying that our mission is to build cutting edge technology that's impacting the lives of every citizen on earth. And India obviously is no exception. Uh, there is in incredible amount of data there's an incredible amount of requirement to try and see how technology can drive impact, especially in the world of healthcare. It's a vertical and a segment that continues to be very important for Intel to find new and, and diverse, as well as global examples that we can carry into national growth as well as development. Um, from a case study perspective, I think outside of uh, COVID and ROK Setu and basically digital platforms that are helping healthcare get more stable, uh, we should also probably look at why cloud is getting so much more important, uh, especially in the world of healthcare. It's really about storage. Uh, as I mentioned to you guys earlier, um, the deluge of data is probably second to none in the world of healthcare. The fact that we have over a billion citizens whose data needs to be tracked on a daily basis to ensure that they are health uh, healthy as well as probably stay healthy um, is very crucial. And so for that, storage of that data is very important. Once the storage happens is when the actual analyses as well as actual impact can be driven. Optimizing on the storage continues to be very important. If you look at cloud today in terms of components of cloud that make sense for a healthcare organization or a government body, it's really the, the databases that could be hosted on, on AWS or on cloud. It's about the applied technology, whether it's a hybrid experience depending on the deployment model or the actual distribution model. Um, it all really kind of comes together, um, whether it's memory, whether it's storage, whether it's IO that is required, as well as uh, probably even data security. Um, all of these kind of come together um, and continue to be a very important need for the healthcare industry. As Samarth mentioned, it could be all the way from patient safety to telemedicine to even right now, EMR is becoming a larger play uh, in the healthcare providing uh, space. 
So trying to ensure that all of these kind of comes full circle in terms of needs from a healthcare impl implementation perspective and using cloud to make that happen is very important. From a case study perspective, what I'd also like to bring up from everything that Samrat already mentioned is the fact that the ready adoption or the readiness of the customer is also very necessary. The openness should not be because they don't have an option but to move to cloud, but it should be that this is the option that they're going for because it will give them the most cost-effective experience, the most scalable experience. Um, and having that become more of the, 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 the logo or the motto uh, for healthcare organizations, being ready, being capable, being skilled to adopt, and also being open to partnerships. As uh, Samrath mentioned, it's not just you know AWS and Intel that are providing technology, but it's an ecosystem of ISVs like and ecosystems of partners like Cloud4C that actually build those solutions as well as those use cases for uh, the requirement of the, the specific health organization. So kind of putting all of that together is more a direction that Intel is taking to nurture develop as well as co-engineer with our partners, with our tech providers, with our cloud, and ensure that our, again, our customers, as well as those use cases that are so life critical, get the right benefit um, to, a, to the most uh, engineered experience possible. Wonderful. Uh, moving on to Dr. Anil. Dr. Anil, uh, digital health IDs are set to become a game changer for the sector with the leading healthcare centers like Ames set to go paperless from 2023. A critical aspect of consideration in this has always been data privacy. We've seen uh, something that just happened a few weeks ago where data from Ames was hacked into. So, um, you know, what steps have you taken to prioritize keeping healthcare data more secure? Uh, while we appreciate that leading uh, care centers are looking at a paperless hospital, or I believe the right word should be less of paper, the success of actual digital health IDs lies with automating the smaller hospitals. Let me give you some statistics, right? In India, out of some uh, 11 and a half lakh private beds, only some 50,000 beds are actually collectively managed by top five to six corporate chains. So the real need is in handling the rest of 10 and a half lakh private beds. And that's where we really want to be the game changers. These smaller hospitals in the range of say 10 to 100 beds have their own limitations, are the one who really needs to be assisted. And they are very, very critical for success of ABA or uh, personal health record, which Government of India is rolling out, right? Uh, the healthcare industry in India has faced more than 1.9 million cyber attacks this year till November 28. The attacks came from more than 41,000 unique IP addresses, which can be traced back to Vietnam, Pakistan, and China, right? Yes. Patient data is the hospital's responsibility and no matter where we hide the uh, within the hospital premises, they are always outplayed. Let me give you some more statistics. 74% of all healthcare data breaches are from hacking and IT incidents are attributed to understaffed healthcare IT departments, right? Legacy technologies that are not configured properly for new medical technologies and a lack of interoperability standards. So what we from CHIP, while we are offering a cloud-based solution, actually solves most of these problems, right? Uh, we have built the products which are completely on HL7 and FHIR standards, right? And the entire solution is actually inbuilt firewall. We auto-isolate and validate every backup. There's a two-factor authentication. Security as a service has been provided. Endpoint protection is also very keen. And uh, we provide entire migration, configuration, security, and ongoing maintenance of your entire cloud. So in short, your data is completely safe with us. And we are responsible to take care of this entirety in CHIP. Wonderful. Uh, let's, uh, let's move on to Dr. Surindran Venkatraman. Um, as in, uh, Dr. Dr. Venkatraman, as an early adopter, tell us about the thought process behind your de uh, decision to leverage uh, CHIB and uh, what impact has it made on your organization? Basically, I'll just give an overview of the situation where I'm working in. I'm working in a government medical college in Pondicherry. It's a union territory. The background of the infrastructure in terms of information and technology is lacking in almost all of the 
public and also private setups are coming up with in new IT technologies in the uh, current scenario. So keeping in mind, we have a lacking uh, infrastructure in place. CE has given us a complete solution in terms of providing one, the implementation of HMIS with recent adaptations such as your ABDM, digital machine, where a patient can come and have a longitudinal electronic medical record so that he can access his medical records everywhere. So that is the ultimate patient-centered system that the patient can see anywhere when he moves throughout the country. So that CHIB has given us a info. In along to that, there are also additional data security measures. He has told all the uh, data security measures that Dr. Anil has given us, where in terms of international standards, which will definitely protect the sensitive information. I think among all the information which the individual is giving to a particular firm, health information is the most sensitive information which has to be protected and it should be available to the user end only, at least to the patient and not anyone else. So CHIB has given us a given a full insight and a full data package to install it. Third, in terms of IT infrastructure, almost all the government initiatives, let it be ABDM, or any other HMIS, even now our National Medical Council, okay, which is the governing body of medical colleges, emphasizes on cloud-based system so that there is a transparent data which is being shared from the user end, that is the medical colleges to the national level data analytic members. So this there is no duplication of entries. So data cloud companies like CHIB give us a complete solution of transferring the data anywhere. So I can sit anywhere else and look at the data how IGMC RA is performing in terms of OPD and IPD. So these three things were the uh, main reasons that we went behind and the background information, see the cost might be currently fluctuating in terms of cloud computing, but it is better in terms of putting a uh, data management center here and running it with people. I think cloud management is a better in terms of transferability and also in terms of maintenance. I think these are the measures which motivated us as a government institute to go towards CHIB. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, bring in Samarth here. Samarth, if you could take us through how uh, EWS powered innovations like CHIB are helping in uh, shaping healthcare tech in India. So uh, the concept of uh, CHIB or CHIB as we are calling it now actually was very interesting and the whole intent here was to drive innovation in healthcare for India. Uh, I think let's let's dive deep into how we are enabling this. So we are only scratching the surface right now. With CHIB, the vision is much larger uh, in terms of tech innovation and what we what we intend to do. Uh, we've only started with a HMIS, that's the Hospital Management Information System, and that's really the backbone of the ABDM at the Pan-India level. What that essentially means is can we enable hospitals, clinics, Pan-India to just start generating medical data digitally and and store it on cloud and then from there on starts the journey of longitudinal health records of patients as we say cradle to grave uh, you know enabling patients to help them access their health records not just in in the location that they're seeking treatment but you know all across the country across hospitals across the entire ecosystem and and that's really the first thing that we thought about now as you go deeper into this uh, you know this, this this innovation the second thing that we are looking to build as a part of this health informatics in a box uh, is is what we call uh, you know the health locker so the way we would we would be we are conceptualizing this is that you first start create create the backbone or create the hmis and then you start putting in all the other layers which are required for the for the abdm at uh, for the country at last something i was talking about a little while ago once you start enabling things like a health locker, which is again done through an ISV, so a, a partner or an ISV or an aggregation of partners or ISVs who will all be plugging into the uh, the digital health ecosystem through open APIs can start actually getting aggregated into the CHIB as, as we solve for that use case going forward. The next plugin will be that of telemedicine, uh, teleradiology, e-pharmacy. There are a lot of solutions that are being built there on AWS. Can we bring them together and start solving for that as we go deeper into problem solving in healthcare for a state at large or for a district or for, for that matter, for the country at large. Then we start tackling the next problem, that of uh, insurance claims. 
So there are a lot of uh, solution providers who are trying to solve problems in terms of automation of claims adjudication, detection of fraud analytics, and basically simplifying and making this whole process a lot more speedy. And that will be the next innovation where we get in solution providers, ISPs who are leveraging capabilities like machine learning to solve for automation of claims adjudication. And as all of this happens and more and more providers come on to uh, a, a solution like a CHIB, there's a lot of data that gets generated which starts getting accumulated on cloud. And that's where we start building a layer of machine learning and AI to enable health analytics, predictive disease management, predictive patient care, uh, and those use cases will start coming in. And finally, you know, when we are going through the maturity curve and, and reaching almost to the end of it, we will be solving for things like uh, consent management. Uh, we will also be uh, uh, solving for things like data anonymization because patient data or healthcare data needs to be anonymized and you need to build an anonymization layer before this data comes into any sort of an open data repository for further analytics or any kind of health tech innovation or, 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 or even creating command and control centers for states. So that's really how we've thought this through. Right now, CHIB is only an infant, which is solving the base problem. But in the next couple of years, this is how we're going to layer it up. And, and we're going to you know, leverage our ecosystem of ISVs, health techs, partners, to solve this entire ambit of problems at the ecosystem level. Wow, fascinating. Uh, Dr. Anil, your collaboration with AWS played a key role in bringing uh, CHIB to life. Can you take us through this journey and how it has led to the creation of uh, CHIB? Well, uh, birds of the same feather flock together, right? And trust me when I tell this, this is a passion-driven decision of getting together to deliver what we believe is a must-needed game changer from the Indian perspective. C4C and in particular our CMD Mr. Sridhar always wanted to build a solution-based approach for healthcare. The intention was to provide a single SLA and a bouquet of software solutions relevant to hospital, a secure infra, a zero capex model for smaller hospitals to actually kickstart their uh, digital health journey. Let me tell you how we started, right? We started recognizing the current uh, challenges in healthcare, the dipstick surveys uh, across hospitals, closed door CIO consultations, built evaluation metrics. Uh, I mean, we followed it up with uh, evaluation of more than 50, uh, you know, plus solutions available in the market, met AWS a year back, presented the use case and the solution. Instant, we loved each other, we liked each other, and then followed up with multiple boardroom meetings, multiple chime meetings, architecture plan, sustenance plan, operations plan. Uh, and finally, your marketing gurus made us sit right uh, in front of you and CNBC. Right. For us, well, it was always Intel inside in our, in our uh, CHIP architecture. The solution that we are trying to bring in is a multi-tenant, multi-instance framework and is intended to cater to smaller hospitals, which are actually large in number. So the data is huge and the best solution would always be architected with Intel process inside. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Dr. Surendran, to bring you in here, what does the roadmap look like and how do you see the solution evolving in the near future? Uh, being a healthcare provider at the top level of the healthcare system, we are currently in a tertiary uh, center where we are providing almost all the different kinds of facilities that you would expect in an hospital. The first uh, futuristic roadmap would be integrating all levels of the healthcare system maybe the primary and the secondary levels, so that you can definitely reduce the burden of the uh, patient care that comes on the tertiary level, and you can definitely deviate them to the other secondary and the primary healthcare systems, where the patient definitely would be feeling better, and the, the turnaround time for the patients also will definitely reduce. So this in turn reduces a lot of medical errors and also the burden on the healthcare professionals. So that is the ultimate motto of these cloud computing, where you can integrate all the patient records into a single box, a union territory like Puducherry with a very good healthcare infrastructure. We have almost 30 primary health centers for a square 400 square kilometers. That is almost one PHC for every five to seven kilometers. We can definitely mobilize patients to all these centers for minor ailments and definitely refer us to all the needs in terms of any specialized services. So this cloud computing definitely would give us the opportunity to integrate our systems. Second thing is, in the, in the era of digitalization of almost all the things, 
electronic medical records which have been proved useful in all western countries is a must for a country like india where there is huge utilization of healthcare se healthcare services in the public sector almost 67 percentage of the healthcare services are provided only by public hospitals i think it is a must so that a person who is who is having a facility in pondicherry can also come to delhi tomorrow and can utilize the facility there and utilizing the same amount of free checkup which he has done in puducherry so that definitely would be a uh, a boon definitely in implementing these kind of com cloud computing services and third is definitely as healthcare professionals with my journey for the past 6 months with chib i have learned a lot about cloud computing and the digitalization scenario well in the last 6 months then than any other in my 30 years of life so i think healthcare professionals also should be trained in this journey so that they are adapting more to these type of cloud computing services wonderful uh, akanksha uh, you know we're going to close this conversation with you and uh, you have the herculean task of putting it uh, summing it up all for us uh, how do you see the future of healthcare evolve from a technology perspective we've spoken about cloud use of ai iot i just want you to summarize all of that and what does the future look like sure sure the uh it's a very very uh interesting discussion that we've had here today a fantastic lineup of experts that we have here from from obviously technology providers to people that are supporting the partnership and the collaboration all the way to people that are benefiting uh from the power of these partnerships um you have seen healthcare continuing to be a very important national vertical you have seen healthcare becoming the most probably the most booming uh industry uh in terms of technology capability as well as opportunity So when we look at whether it's it's making a digital platforms come alive whether it's about keeping patients more safe whether it's getting more access to our citizens to healthcare facilities whether it's skilling uh practitioners uh researchers on cloud capability on how they can carry that data to inside sky is the limit um at the end of it if you look at the future of healthcare i would think that it is the future of healthcare with cloud or cloud healthcare how do you make sure that a technology like this converges with the actual needs of the healthcare industry whether it's cost whether it's convenience whether it's scalability or the quick ease with the help of which all the various use cases in the in the loo of applications actually come alive and how easy are they to be able to adopt or integrate themselves into the ecosystem of healthcare whether it's it's technology providers whether it's isvs whether it's system integrators that can work with them more closely to become more domain experts and have the domain experts become more technological practitioners I think that's really going to be what it is so i feel the power of collaboration the power of partnerships and the power of technology actually impacting the lives of today's world under the segment of healthcare and coming making that actually a platform that can actually show the world how a national data framework how a national data initiative around healthcare can impact the world and show the world really how this can become something that they can even learn and adopt along with us we have the unique advantage of the fact that our partnerships are that close our relationships are that close our skills are available we have the data like second to none in the entire world how can we converge all of these amazing capabilities to drive national as well as international impact that would be really the direction that intel as well as the rest of the experts here would like to provide back to audiences food for thought Well, with that, we come to a close uh, of this uh, fabulous and a very insightful conversation. Clearly, the narrative on healthcare has evolved tremendously, and we do hope that India emerges as a leader in driving innovation from the tech point of view in the healthcare space. A big thank you to all my panelists for taking up the time today to share their insights. Thank you. Money Control presents Transforming a Billion Lives. Presented by AWS Intel.
Hi, I am Abhishek, the co-founder and director of Medisage, one of the Asia's largest healthcare ecosystem for doctors. Our goal and vision is to become one of the largest and the fastest content creation platform and content platform for doctors where doctors can upskill, learn and uh, upgrade themselves uh, through working with experts, collaborating and uh, through peers. As we scale world over and we have more and more countries that are using our platform, the app and the website, we've faced major challenges, especially when we are disseminating information through video content. What we've realized when we started off Medisage's journey uh, with the video application that we were using was that the, uh, the video application was not working in most of the countries, especially in the Southeast Asian region. And when we started to build our you know, presence in all these markets, we realized that the doctors in these countries were not able to watch our live interactions, webinars, video content as well. And that was the biggest challenge and the uphill task. At that point, AWS came to save um, us from the situation and was able to deliver a fantastic video solution that we have and that we've incorporated now that's able to deliver and consistently you know create seamless information uh, you know banks and lakes for all our customers and doctors across the world. What I saw uh, interesting about the AWS uh, platform, the feature and the team that was there was that they were extremely consultative in terms of the solutions that they provided, um, understanding the challenges at Medisage, um, our company, and then providing solutions, best in practice, best in class sort of uh, solutions very, very quickly. So we were extremely happy and satisfied with that. When you look at AWS today, AWS is probably a a biggest savior for us internally. When you look at business, when you look at technology, continuous needs of whether it be doctors or some of our customers are immense and they are changing rapidly. What we've realized with the suite of solutions that AWS provides um, is fantastic. When you look at you know scaling videos, you know, subtitling, closed captioning, data sciences, all of that is now through AWS. So whenever we reach out to AWS with a problem, they are able to solve it extremely quickly and uh, provide solutions. At this stage at Medisage, when we are scaling rapidly across the world, we need a partner who's able to do that rapidly and responsibly. And that's where we find AWS as a fantastic solution for us. Money Control presents Transforming a Billion Lives, presented by AWS Intel. Well, with that, it's a wrap from all of us here. One of the key takeaways from this entire series of conversations is that healthcare and technology, integrating the two, will have to require a multi-stakeholder effort. It cannot be just driven by the private sector or by the government alone. What's heartening to hear and to learn is the number of startups that have emerged in this space and that have disrupted the healthcare space, making it only better for people like you and me. We'll be back with more. Thanks so much for watching. Money Control presents Transforming a Billion Lives, presented by AWS Intel.